Hey everybody, how's it going? So in today's video, I want to uh, basically do a little walkthrough tutorial of how to work with the Unsplash API to get a random image. So I'm just gonna kind of jump straight in to the code. There's only two things that you're gonna need to do this along with me. That is a copy of Postman, which is a, an app that you can use to query APIs. And you need an Unsplash account with a, de with a developer key basically. So just go to Unsplash, there's a link in the description down below to download Postman and to go and open up an Unsplash dev account. Once you've got those two things installed, come back to the video and we'll take it from there. Right, so here we are in Unsplash. Unsplash is basically a website with a load of free images. Um, I believe that all the images up here are Creative Commons, so you can use them for non-commercial usage. So they're amazing for personal projects and portfolios. Um, or if you just need sort of like a background image for something, or if you just want to find some really cool photography as well, this is a great website to uh, get inspired by. But why did I come to use this? Basically, we have um, some interns at work, and they're working on their final project for their internship. At the moment, one of them is making a, an app, or sort of a, a booking app, let's say, where a user can come in, they can select the location they want to travel to, and then they can you know make a booking essentially and i suggested to them why don't they take the unsplash api and when the user enters in a location they'd like to, to travel to for london for example uh, when they type in london it could bring up a list of images that the user could then select one of them and save that as sort of like the image of their trip let's say and uh, they said to me oh that's actually a really cool idea yeah um how do i use the unsplash api and i was like it's a very good question. Why don't we discover that together? So after about half an hour of sort of looking and working out and hacking together, we kind of came up with this solution. Again, it's not the best solution. It's probably not the safest or most secure solution. But if you're just looking to quickly connect to this API, this is, the again, the fastest way I've found to do it. Um, so basically, you just need to come to Unsplash, open up an account with them. It's completely free. Uh, open up a dev account. Just Google Unsplash um, developer API. I've also left a link for it in the description down below. You basically want to come in and uh, you get to the API docs, which are here. They're really good. You've got here on the left-hand side all the different uh, endpoints that you can need. If you quickly scroll down and just get started, they even have a JavaScript, an iOS, an Android, a Ruby, and a PHP library, uh, like an SDK that you can use. So if you were doing a bigger project or a full-stack project, um, you can sort of install that and use that. But if you're simply just looking to just do a quick get request, this is how I did it. Um, so their basic schema here, all their requests go to the api.unsplash.com endpoint. But how do we actually send a request? Like how do we get an image back, let's say? So if you go into your apps section and you click on new application, um, see I've read through these before. Um, and I am gonna call this video, oh there it is conveniently, YouTube video. <laughs> uh, this is an app for YouTube video, create the application, and it's as simple as that. <laughs> your application is now created, and basically you've got all the information about your app here if you were to go and use it on a bigger project, or if you did need to do more requests. So obviously in this state right now, you can do 5,000 requests an hour, which is quite a lot. Um, but basically what I'm interested in in my account is my keys down here. Um, obviously, I'm going to be going ahead and deleting this account after this video has been put out, so don't bother trying to use them. But you have an access key and a secret key. In this context, I'm only interested in the access key. So once again, what am I looking to do? I'm a user. I come in, I search for London, and I want to get a selection of images of London to be able to save along with my trip plan. So I'm probably going to be doing a get request. Uh, I want to get a list of photos. I don't want to get a random photo because that could give me anything. I don't want to get just one photo of London. I want to be able to give my user the option to decide what photo they want. So I'm looking here for the list of photos and I'm going to be doing a search basically. So if I hop over here to Postman, you can see I've got my base schema here, api.onsplash.com slash search. And I'm doing a get request. And, my, and then basically just build up a query string against the photos endpoint. So my first part of the query string is going to be what I'm querying. My query is basically my search term. So if I was to go here and type in London here, it's just, you know, that's made my query string. So these are the images of London you get when you search for London. 
So if I was building this into a project, I'd probably build this string dynamically in JavaScript, let's say using string interpolation, and I would get that, um, you know, that, that keyword there, London, dynamically, but here I'm obviously hard coding it in Postman. And then I need to use my client ID. My client ID is basically the, uh, you know, key that I'm saying to unsplash, hey, I've got an app, I'm registered, can you give me some photos, please? So you wanna take your access key, and if we go over here and paste that in, send the request, and I get 6,109 results. I've got 611 pages. Obviously, you can do pagination, you can chain up pagination in this request string, uh, sorry, in this query string. Didn't do it now, but just so you know, you don't have to do a request and get, you know, this huge amount of data back. But you get basically a results array. Uh, if we make that a little bit bigger somewhere, somehow. Mm. Anyway, oh, I'll just scroll down. <laughs> so in the results array, going in there, I've got an object, and then you've just basically got an array of objects, essentially, which is all your different images that you've got back. Um, and then you have a lot of information about that image. Um, you know, alt descriptions, the URLs, these are the hot linked URLs to uh, Yunsplash. Uh, the links that you can use to link to the photo if you want to credit it, if you want to put down photo by somebody. Um, all the user information, so this is the user that actually uploaded the photo. So if you're going to go ahead and credit them, uh, you can stick a link to their uh, their account. And basically, that's a profile image of the user, uh, their Instagram username, and all the different tags that they've added for the photo. So similarly, uh, winding through London, an aerial photo of the London skyline during daytime. That sounds pretty cool. And that was taken by Benjamin Davies. Um, so you know, right here in Postman, I could just go ahead and open that up and see. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. That's a nice photo. Let me use that in my app. But basically, that's it. That's all I needed to do to get a huge array of different photos of London. Just that, That's my query string. So uh, yeah, that, that was it, quick video, but I'll take you back out to that camera right now. Well, there we go. Wasn't that fun and actually quite easy. Um, I know looking through, sometimes looking through dev documentation, things aren't clear. This actually took me quite a lot of trial and error to work out how to build the exact query that I would need to do. Obviously, this isn't a perfect way of doing it. There are a lot better ways you can obscurify your API key. Um, but if you're just trying to build a quick little personal project for yourself, you want a random image or you want a user to be able to put in, um, you know, a search text field to find a specific image, this is a good way. This is a great way that you can integrate using images that are free, open source into your projects that you can use to build and find jobs or just build for your own needs, basically. And again, also, if you do look through the Unsplash documentation, they do have some server-side libraries. If you do want to, you know, integrate a little bit more into a more, uh, you know, serious project or a full-stack project, just go ahead and read the docs. It isn't that hard once you kind of understand how they how it works. If you enjoyed this video, maybe go ahead and give it a thumbs up or leave me a comment down below. Um, and until next time, thank you so much for watching. If you haven't done so already, you should see my head here. You can click on it. You can subscribe. And there might also be a video up here popping up for something that YouTube thinks you might enjoy watching next. And again, thank you so much for watching and see you next time.